Hello, um, and welcome back. So um, today what we wanted to do is I wanted us to sort of talk a little bit about um, the materials for week one, where we're going to be covering what race, ethnicity, we're going to define those, and we're going to also um, discuss intersectionality and, and, and racial formation. So um, what we do here right now in this course is we're going to do like a conceptual breakdown of race and ethnic uh, relations and concepts and definitions and perspectives. Okay. Um, what we're seeing here right now is uh, just an introduction where we're going to look at some of the more conceptual foundations of what it really means to be like an American, right? Um, especially for folks that are from Native American, African American, Latinx, and Asian American communities. We're going to unpack some of these essential questions, especially with the founding and, and formation of U.S. society. Um, and we're also going to be looking at, um, you know, how did the founding documents dedic uh, dedicated to freedom and equality not only recognize, uh, recognize racial and gender subordination, but also facilitate it? Um, these are some of the really uh, important questions that uh, Karenga presents to us um, and how we're going to look at how these sort of concepts intersect. So I really want us to look at this breakdown. And what I wanted to also look at is how these essential concepts such as ethnic group are uh, ethnocentrism, right? Um, race, racism, right? These are terms that we sort of see uh, fairly frequently, but I really wanted us to sort of get a better understanding of what these concepts really look like. And the Karenga piece really helps uh, with this particular uh, analytical framework. Okay, there are uh, three primary factors that are defined uh, through ethnic groups, right? Historical and national origin, uh, distinctive cultural traits and practices, and there's also a sense of community. And all these four uh, groups uh, under study, Native American, African American, Latinx, and Asian, uh, stem from this historical or national group uh, within or outside the U.S. and come into being as ethnic groups uh, when they are incorporated into uh, larger the larger society. So again, really thinking about what it really means to be an ethnic group or ethnicity, okay, um, and and how these are sort of categorizations that we kind of look at, but also how they're um, you know constructed, right? And we're going to talk a little bit about the construction of it in a in a separate lecture, okay. We also look at how all these sort of ethnicities or ethnic groups really um, have their own cultures, cultural patterns, ways of looking at and approaching the world, uh, which is very different and varies from uh, the dominant cultural practices, okay? For example, we have religion, right? That's very different and, and sort of uh, high, highlight, highlighted uh, in that sort of way. So there's a sense of community that ethnic groups have Right. And thinking also that there are also white or European ethnics or, for example, the Irish, uh, but this class focuses on people of color and does not investigate the white or European groups. Right. So we're really focused on sort of the people of color as we would quote, you know, as we sort of highlighted earlier. Uh, but we do want to recognize the fact that there are other sort of ethnic groups uh, within white or European groups that um, that can be sort of fleshed out and sort of um, you know, other iterations of, of ethnic studies, but not in this particular class. Okay, uh, so we have ethnocentrism. Um, ethnocentrism is, is basically, um, you know, uh, this feeling of commitment to and preference for one's ethnic group, uh, seeing it as the significant or exclusive center of one's concerns and activities, uh, and, and just making sure that we kind of look at ethnocentrism as something that is um, a uh, barometer, right? It's a measure of um, sort of, of of our own understanding of what it means to uh, be sort of uh, our own perceptions, right? If it's the premier center, then it quickly and often does not include not only preference for one's group, but also ten tendency for uh, viewing one's group as superior to others to judge others by the standards and values of one's group and to deny others the right to equal access to wealth, power, and status that one claims for one's self group. Okay, so it's, it's this thought and practice that's rooted in this assumption that is um, relevant in value 
um, are centered in this sort of European peoples and cultures that all other peoples are at best marginal or at worst irrelevant. Right? And this is, the, this is what we're talking about in terms of ethnocentrism and how that kind of plays into what we now call Eurocentrism, right? Um, especially when we're talking about European people and how their culture is sort of looked at as being more relevant. Okay. And so we also can look at like how ethnocentrism is not necessarily like a hundred percent sort of negative, but I think it defines and it centers and it grounds sort of one community or one perception as one particular um, sort of centered um, perception or you know understanding of how we kind of navigate these spaces. Um, we assume a position that one's culture is not better than all others, but rather preferred by one for non-prejudicial reasons and being open to mutually beneficial relations and exchanges with others. Okay. Uh, on the flip side of it, we also have this concept called uh, Afrocentricity, which is a methodology and orientation or approach that's rooted in cultural image and human interest of African and African people. Right. So again, we're looking at these different concepts and seeing how we can kind of interrelate them and, and relate them to um, what we're going to be talking about um, as we move forward in the in the semester. We're also going to be looking at race and race is a concept that has both a biological uh, and scientific and social dimension. Right. Um, it's a sort of biological category for distinguishing different groups or different kinds of humans. Uh, but clearly there is more to race than one's uh, skin uh, and the texture of one's hair, et cetera, right? And so what we look at is it's a definition, right? Race is a, defined as a sociobiological concept, constructed, okay? And I think it's really important for us to understand the concept of construction to assign human worth and social status using Europeans as the paradigm, right? And within this, you see racism and where racism is a system of denial deformation and de uh, destruction of a people's history, humanity, and human rights based on exclusive, exclusively or primarily on the specious concept of race, right? There's a sort of notion that, um, you know, race is sort of, um, you know, sort of solidified, you know, as a particular truth when in reality it's is objective, right? But it's actually very subjective, especially with, uh, in, in terms of conceptually understanding that race is a uh, a social construct. And we'll talk a little bit about this um, in further detail when we look into the works of Omi and Weiner. Um, but when we're looking at racialization, um, we're talking about giving racial and social meaning to features thought and practice, uh, features thought and practice. So thinking about how we uh, apply meaning to um, race, right? Um, we, we apply meaning to how people interact or, or, or cultural customs, et cetera. And this is where the concept of racial formation comes into play, which was introduced by Omi and Wynott, um, where they argue that race and racial formation are state or government constructed and uh, sustained phenomena in the interest of the ruling group or class. All right, we look at these concepts such as uh, prejudice, right? Where um, you know, there are these negative attitudes that are then sort of built into this sort of uh, for racial formation. And we see how racial prejudice is a hostile attitude directed toward others uh, because of negative assumptions about their group and culture. We have imposition where racism is an act of dominance that is always at first an act of violence and appropriation. Uh, but we also see that we also have um, ideologies as well, where racism is a system of popular pseudo-scientific or pseudo-intellectual assumptions about uh, the oppressed and racialized group to justify oppression and unequal treatment. And through this, right, we see uh, this notion of discrimination. And these are terms that we see used maybe in a, in a contemporary sense. But discrimination is action or behavior which denies um, equal, uh, equal access, opportunities, and rights to persons because of prejudice or other arbitrary reasons. And then we also see uh, stratification that also uh, comes to fruition too, where uh, we have this sort of ranking system that definitely happens as well through um, wealth, power, and status. Um, and stratification causes dominant majority and subordinate minority groups, right?
what we then see is a dominant group. We have stratification that happens, but then we also have dominant groups that sort of come to play. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, um, we're looking at a dominant group in terms of like the dominant numbers. When we're talking about numbers, we're talking about um, how there are, um, you know, more sort of people in the majority that have power than, than not. And that's not necessarily the case either. It's not just about power by numbers, especially when we're looking at states like California, right, where more people of color are still uh, referred to as minorities. Uh, we also have dominant groups, right, a group with the most significant share of wealth, right, versus subordinate groups who don't have control or have less control. And this is kind of what we're looking at in terms of like, it's not about, you know, having uh, numbers, but rather having power. Right. And, and this is where stratification comes into play, right? Uh, where the rankings in society uh, are important then, not only because they create different kinds of groups, but also because they determine for members of each group. So then they determine how, who gets treated well, who doesn't get treated well, who has access to certain goods and, and, and uh, property as well. Um, and we also have race, class, and gender, where there are three main concepts of stratification. So what I wanted us to do is to really like ruminate and sort of sit on these concepts, especially theoretical concepts that we're going to uh, delve into in a little bit, but also realizing that I'm giving us a sort of in broad strokes, these, um, these concepts and ideas that are going to help us formulate our understanding as we move through um, particular, uh, particular units and particular modules in this course. So theoretical perspectives. Uh, Karenga kind of moves us through this. Um, this is uh, fairly sociological in the sense that we're looking at functionalist perspective versus conflict perspectives. And we're going to see that, um, you know, with him, uh, uh, Karenga sort of breaking this down, I think it's really important for us to understand what the conflict perspective is. Um, you know, we're looking at power struggles and, and change as, as normal, um, but also seeing that how, right, they are normalized in our society too, of seeing like the folks that are kind of, you know, the haves and the have nots kind of thing, where we kind of see folks uh, having more power than, than less uh, and how they can dictate um, their own sort of understanding of how society should be run through this notion of power. Okay. Uh, we're also going to be looking at comparative com uh, perspectives, uh, or at least uh, Karenga walks us through this, right? Uh, we're going to discuss race, class, and ethnicity in various ways and instances, and we want to see how, um, you know, race, class, and gender intersect. And we're going to talk a little bit about what, like, intersectionality are, uh, but this is what we're going to be looking into in, term of, in terms of how uh, these concepts really help us or get a better understanding of what our society, uh, how our society is really built and how it affects the individual, especially when we're looking at uh, racial categories. Okay. Um, and last, the Karenga piece kind of walks us through uh, modes of domination, uh, where you know there are different sort of systemic sort of constructions, racial constructions, categories of otherness that are then created uh, through these modes of production, or modes of domination rather, not modes of production, modes of domination. We have modes of response, ways in which people of color respond. And, um, you know, there are different ways of, uh, that he's sort of critical of, right? He's talking about submission, right? Accommodation, and, and lastly, resistance. And I think this is where ethnic studies comes into play. Well, there's these modes of res responses of resistance that we see that have changed the academic uh, curriculum as well. And finally, we have modes of uh, cultural construction where race, class, and gender offer a context uh, in which cultural construction uh, flourishes, um, you know, where these um, oppressed groups still go about creating and finding meaning and value in and through their culture, proactively creating free space in which they can satisfy their needs, speak their particular truth, and live their lives according to their views, values, and aspirations. And our, these are fundamental areas of culture include history, religion, social organization, economic organization, political organization, creative production, and ethos. Uh, it also provides a central source of resistance and offers ongoing evidence of groups of human uh, durability and adaptive, adaptive vitality in various systems of domination and oppression. So again, looking at how, uh, you know, we... Uh, 
you know, in ethnic studies, especially, um, look at these sort of modes of cultural construction, right, through history, in particular, and kind of thinking outside of uh, what that really uh, should look like um, for the the people, right, um, and, and how this is a project more of resistance than it is to uh, of, of submission or even uh, maybe even accommodation as well. So um, what I would really highly recommend for us is to sort of pour over the, the articles that I did post uh, by Karenga and, and using this uh, particular page as a guide to help us navigate the space um, in, our, uh, in, our, in this course. So uh, thanks for checking in.